Good day and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to be talking about replica set in Kubernetes. So let's take a look at what it says a replica set is. A replica set's purpose is to maintain a stable set of replica pods running at any given time. As such, it is often used to guarantee the availability of a specific number of identical pods. So again, replication has to do with many of the same things. So in this case, we want many or more than one of the same pod to be running. Okay, and then when we want that, we're going to use a replica set to make this happen. So how does a replica set work? A replica set is defined with fields, including a selector that specifies how to identify pods it can acquire, a number of replicas indicating how many pods it should be maintaining, and a pod template specifying the data of new pods it should create. So what it's saying there is we need something to say, these are the pods that to identify the pods it needs to you know, maintain. So if you have some pods running and then you create a replica set, it can find those pods and say, okay, do I have enough of these pods running? Are there enough of these pods running? And if they are, then cool, I'll just keep monitoring them. And then if they're not enough, then I could create more. But how am I gonna create more? Well, I have the data to know how to create these pods. Make sense? And of course, that tells you that if you didn't create the pods in the first place and all you did was create the replica set, guess what? It'll just create the pods for you because it would see that they're none running, but it would have the information to be able to create those pods. So the selector is important to be able to identify pods so you can monitor them. And then the data is important to say, how, would, how do I create these pods? Like what image to use and so on. And then of course, the other number is the count. How many of these do you want running? Okay, now we can continue and sort of look at the rest of what it says. And there's an example on this page, but we're not gonna worry about that because I'm gonna show you all of that later. Let me just try and illustrate for you why replicated, having multiple pods is a good idea. So let's say I have a cluster and I have some nodes in my cluster. So I want to run a pod. Let's say it contains Nginx and maybe Redis. So I start off my pod. But for load reason, because I have many users or something, I want multiple instances of this pod running. And we're not gonna talk now about how we're gonna reach them, but we just know we want. But then let's say that pod dies because something is, there's an error in that one, the one those application, it takes down the entire pod. What I want, because remember I have load, so I want another pod to show up. And let's say another pod has started and maybe it's on the same host. Well, if that host dies, then all the pods on that host also will die. Now, if I'm doing this by hand and I'm at the system administrator, I have to now ensure that the, those two pods come back again. So now I spin up some more, recreate those pods, and maybe this time Kubernetes put them on different hosts. But notice, I was the one who had to ensure that two pods were running because I wanted to meet some, let's say, demand, like I said, load or something like that. So this is one of those cases where if we had something like a replica set, when our pod died the first time, the replication, replica set would ensure that it creates another pod. And maybe that might be on the same host or another host. Again, we, we talked about this already. Kubernetes stays scared of where to put the pods. And then if the host went away with those pods on it, well, Kubernetes was, again, would you, because we have a replica set, notice that and say, ah, I need to recreate not just one pod, but this time two pods, if that's the number of replication that I have. So now you see why a replica set needs the number of pods you want to keep running. It needs to have the specification in its template for how to create pods because if it needs to recreate those pods, it needs to know which image to use and all this other stuff. And spoiler alert, you're gonna see that part of the information that we use in a pod is exactly the same information that we put in the replica set because the replica set needs to be able to create pods. So it must have enough of the pod 
specification to be able to do this in its template, in the replication sets template. And then they mentioned the selector. Well, that is selector, like I mentioned before, and we'll see that is only so it can identify the parts that it's responsible for. You see me use get parts to show the number of parts in our namespace, or get nodes to show the number of nodes. Now, with the minus O option, we can do Y, which shows you a little bit more information. But the thing is, you can actually combine the two and use get part comma nodes, and then it will show you both. Now, I want to be able to monitor how many pods and replicas, or at least monitor information about pods and replica. So I'll combine those two, and I'm going to use the watch minus D command, the watch command with minus D option, which shows the difference. And watch just simply run a command, then with a few seconds, two seconds is the default, run it again, and then show you the difference between the two outputs. And so it's easy to see something change. Okay, now with this in place, I can then now go ahead and start working on, um, I can now go ahead and show you how we create a replica set. Now I'm starting here with a pot because we've covered this before. So there's no point in you seeing me create a pod. And let's call this pod A stack. Let's just give it some name. The important thing here are the labels. Now remember, labels could be any key value pair. And so you can put as many as you want so long as the keys are unique. So, you know, here I, you see me adding a few keys, but we're going to revert and just keep the two um, labels that we had before, which is owner and app. Now, using the kubectl apply command, I'm going to create this pod. Now, what I want to show you here is that even though I create the pod, the fact that my replica set is going to look for the attributes associated with this pod, it is going to say, oh, I already have a pod running. So it doesn't need to create it if there's enough. Now, if there's not enough, it's going to add to it so long as it has the labels that you define for that replica set. So now that we have one pod already, let's imagine that we want to scale this up. So what we have to do, we have to create a second pod. But since this pod is already created, we can't use the same name. If we try to just simply rerun this file to say apply to th thinking that we'll get a second pod, it'll just say it's unchanged because all the specification that we have in this pod file those are already applied and the pod is running. So we'll just simply change the name because that's all we need. Remember, if we're scaling up our pods, we want multiple pods. The containers and everything that are supposed to be running that we're scaling up, we want the same exact same set of container in the pod. So we change the name and we do apply now. Now you see that we've created another pod. This time it's called B stack. All right, so now let's create our replica set, which is going to manage these pods for us. And what we'll do is simply create a file that's a copy of one of our of the path file because I want to show you just how similar um, a replica set is to what we have as a pod. Now notice the first thing I change is the API version. For pods, the API version is just version one, but for replica set, you'll see that it's just it's app slash version one, app slash version one. And of course the type kind have to change. We talked about this before, the kind says well, what is this scrutinized resource about? And then the name, we'll just call it my stack. Now you can still have labels and stuff. Notice the same sort of layout with API version, kind, metadata, and spec. Now here for the spec, once we change the kind to replica set, it's telling us that, oh, hey, you're missing a selector. This is what we read in the documentation about a replica set, our replica set work. It says it needs to be able to select or find the pods it's going to manage. So now we're going to write a selector. There are different types of selectors, but the one that we're going to use is going to match the labels that we use on our pod. So if we put our pod definition side by side, we can see that we have two set of labels here, but I'll just use the app label to say we want to find pods that have app stuff as their label. Now, the other thing that we need to complete our replica set is a template. The template, again, remember, is the specification for how you should create pods. And we know from, if we look at the pod file on the, the right-hand side, 
what we see is that what really makes a pod unique, right, is all the stuff that says what label it should get when you create it, and of course the container and the specification. Now we don't need the name because the replica set is going to be responsible for creating names for us. As you can imagine, that if it, had to, if it had to create multiple pods, we wouldn't be able to specify all the names it can possibly use. So we don't need to use the name, but we need to give it the metadata that it should attach to those pods because it still needs to be able to find them and manage them. And maybe we might also want to find those pods. So we still need to say metadata for this, these pods should have this information. So on the template, how, what you're going to specify how to create the pods, we're going to essentially put basically the same information. And as you can see, except for the name, we put the same information for the, in the replica set that we have in the pod. And this is why I said earlier that you're going to see that we really don't have to create pods explicitly like we did before because the replica set has all the information it needs to create pods. And so if we don't have enough pods, it would simply make them. Notice in my replica set file specification, I did not put how many replicas or how many pods I want. This is going to default to one. And you will see that as soon as I apply the replica set to group CTL, you can see what's going to happen to the two pods that we have running there. And remember, our two pods, we, were cre we created them, we give them their own names, but the labels are still app stuff. Okay. And like I said, the default for a replica set is one. And notice it from two pods running and it goes, ah, oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, the desire is one. And they had two, so it deleted one of them. And you'll see that we tend to delete the most recent ones that were created, but you don't need to worry about that. But it deleted one of them. And now it left us with one because that's how much we desire. But now if we change the replica count to two and we apply the same file again, notice the desired count and the current count. And then now it tells you how many, it's happening so fast that I can't keep up. But you can see how many are ready. It brings it up. And notice the name. It is given it name. The name that is given it is based on the name of the replica set. And that makes sense because it's going to be created in many pods. And so we don't need to worry about the name. And so again, if I change this to five, you'll see that it just knows that it needs to add three more um, pods because there were two running. And so now we have five pods. Look how easy this is. Like, why wouldn't we use replica set? Now, notice that also in the wide output, we can see that those pods are running on different nodes. Again, nothing we have to think about. If we, again, reset the number of pods we want to one, notice how oh, it deletes all those other pods. And that's what I mentioned, that it tends to delete the more, the younger ones, but that doesn't matter. If we want to clean up everything, we just simply say delete this replica set. And because the replica set is managing those pods, Never mind that we created that part. It is saying that, oh, since I'm not going to be around, therefore you don't want any of these parts around, so it removed the parts also. And that's it. And then we can go back to creating our replica set again. And notice this time we're not going to create parts. We just simply created, applied a replica set. And it saw that, oh, it needed to create part, and it created the part. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how the replica set can heal your system or your application if a node were to go down or stop working. So let's change the number of replicas we want to three. And of course, once we go to save and we apply it, we'll have three pods running, so it created two more. This is expected, we've done this already. Now, because I'm using K3D for my cluster, Kubernetes cluster, remember I said, oh, I have multiple nodes, which you can see there on the, the node listing for the um, output of the pods to show where the pods are running. And if you are running Minikube, you're not going to be able to demonstrate this. I explained all that before. Plus, I told you to, how to run Mini K K3D. So hopefully, everybody who wants to be able to do what I'm doing here can do it. So I'm going to stop one of my nodes. So I'm looking at the node there. I can see the node names are K3D, K3S-default-agent-0, or dash 2, and so on. And so there's a pod that we have running, and it's running on agent zero, right, that node. So I stop it. 
eventually what's going to happen is that Kubernetes is going to recognize that oh, this node is not running and it's going to update the, and the replica um, set is going to notice that, well, the part that is running on that node is not available. So you're going to see this, the count on the ready for the number of replicas down at the bottom there is going to go to two. And notice how that happened as soon as the node was marked as not ready. Okay, so at this point, the replica set is still has that the desired count is three. The current count, which means there are three um, pods, that equals the desired count. So it doesn't need to create any more. It's just that we have less than how many we need ready. So two are ready instead of three. But maybe it wants to wait and see if it will come back. So what you want to do is able to do is to wait out the net the glitches. Either it could be a network glitch or something that's restarting. Um, so what's happening here? And I don't know the configuration of Kubernetes, but I'm sure it's somewhere. You can see that though it's going to wait a while before it actually try to create another pod that's going to show up on another host. So I'm going to fast forward because that's going to take a few minutes. But I just want to explain to you why it didn't go and try to create it right away because it's possible that this host might just be restarting, just temporarily de be disconnected from the network. The pod is actually still running there. And so if it waited a little bit, it is better to have that come back, uh, wait for it to see if that's going to come back before going ahead and trying to heal it immediately. So as you can see, I fast forward and the pod did come back in terms of got recreated. This time, the pod was created on agent one, and you can see it down there in the bottom of the list because it's only been running for like, its age is only 16 seconds or so. And the, it says terminating for the pod that was running on agent zero. So we know that one will eventually be removed. We don't have to wait around and watch when it's removed because we already see that now we are back to having three desired, three current, and three ready. And that's the important thing. But we didn't have to do anything other than wait a little bit and then explain why you might want to wait. Okay, so let's wrap up. So, okay, so two more slides before I wrap up. So going forward, instead of doing a Kubernetes cluster and showing you all these nodes and all this other stuff, unless I need to, I wouldn't be doing that. I'll simplify, simplify the diagram because there's a lot to draw. And maybe I just saw some pods that's running in a cluster. Now, if I'm going to be talking about a replica set, I might just show a replica set icon. When you see that icon, you know that oh, it's managing a set of pods. If for any reason I need to say to oh, which replica set is managing which set of pods, then I might put in some lines between a replica set and the pods that it's managing. But other than that, just having a replica set icon should be enough to say to oh, oh, I know that some pods are attached to this replica set. And we know that pods must be running on some node somewhere in the cluster. And we don't care which node and all that sort of stuff. And so we don't need to depict the actual node and call them node one, node two. Again, unless we have really good reason for illustrating what's going on, then we might do that. Last slide. We know that when we have a node, that's where our container run. On the node, we have some container runtime, such as Docker, Rocket, or whatever. Now we use pods to manage those containers. And then in this video, we introduce replica set, which manages pods, one or more pods. So that's it. I hope you learned something today. Thanks for sticking with, the, with me and with the video. If you reached this part in the video and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're a returning member, thank you. I appreciate it. See you in the next video. Stay safe. Definitely thumbs up the video. Leave comments. Let me know what you think. Um, and take care. Bye.